The Ames Collection was put together by two people who were deeply connected and wanted to search out the best art of their time and do it together. And it was really about training a kind of critical eye. In order to build such a great collection, you have to be a bit visually promiscuous and look at all sorts of things. But you have to be extremely rigorous and disciplined about what you actually bring into the collection. There are not that many collections that really are cohesive, where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The Ames Collection seems almost from the beginning to have had that level of long-term insight and discipline. The Ames Collection was put together over about 25 years, and it really is a celebration of painting. That was a very interesting way to go about collecting in the mid-80s. From the late 50s moving forward, many people considered painting to have been dead or to have played out its language. Even when other media became exciting and sexy for young artists to use, the Ames were sort of patron saints of painters. Stephen, in particular, was so passionate about painting that in his mid-50s, he decided he would go back for a master's degree at Columbia University. He was inspired to write his dissertation on Richter, specifically on the role of photography within his work, which is indeed the essence of understanding Richter. Gerhard Richter revitalized painting after the destruction of painting, finding new ways to manipulate the paint on the surface of the canvas. Here's a man whose painting begins questioning whether there's anything new that can be done. Then in the process, he creates a new language for painting. The Ames Collection has a photograph portraits, quite beautiful, a fantastic landscape painting unlike any other that I know. It has a compositional presence and a kind of interfacing of representation and abstraction, which I think distinguishes it from all the other landscape paintings of the 80s and 90s. The grouping is centered on three large-scale, remarkable abstractions. A.B. Still and A.B. St. James really are triumphs the best and most consummate examples of Richter's experiment with abstraction. Richter was using the squeegee and really creating layers upon layers of art so that as you look at a Richter painting, you have to excavate it. You almost go down through layers of sediment. The most interesting dialogue in the collection is between Gerhard Richter and Willem de Kooning. De Kooning comes out of Cubism, and he moved from figuration to abstraction, yet never abandoning that vestige of the human form. When you look at something like his late painting from the 80s, and you see that beautiful, fleshy, pink color there, you are always referenced back to the human form. You really see how de Kooning is deconstructing the figure, deconstructing the picture plane, creating a language of surface and depth entirely different than what the world had seen before. De Kooning is a generation or two older than Richter, and I suppose there's always the ghost of de Kooning hanging over any abstract painter's shoulder. De Kooning finds his way to a different sense of space. He really sets up the line of exploration that leads to the point where one questions what is left to do within painting. There is a very famous book that's a canon of art history written by Irving Sandler called The Triumph of Painting, sort of the Bible of abstract expressionism. We felt the whole collection maybe started with abstract expressionism from the earliest de Kooning's, but then moved into just celebrating painting in the most triumphant way. There are other German artists who are very well represented with extraordinary examples. There's an Anselm Kiefer painting, which is the finest I've ever seen on an intimate scale. Usually those paintings are quite monumental in size. There's a fantastic and singular Sigmar Polka painting. There's probably the most precise, medium scale Philip Guston painting I've ever seen. It's just an extraordinary, perfect painting. There's a number of portraits by George Kondo a contemporary artist who very much is influenced by Picasso portraiture and shows the human figure in different levels of exaggeration. They're challenging paintings. The Ames Collection is beautiful in its color and its abstraction, but there's an undercurrent of real toughness of artists who are questioning what it is to be a painter in the 20th century.